And it's four o'clock. Time now for book of the day. Our three-minute introduction to a book that's coming into the bookstores this week. Susan Allen is in the studio with me. Right, Susan. What's the book of the day? Okay, James. Here it is: The World of Soccer by Alison Farthing. Right. So it's a book about sport. It certainly is, James, and it's called The World of Soccer because it's about how soccer became the world's favorite sport, enjoyed today by billions of people. The book starts with the story of where the game was first played and how it started to spread all over the world in the late 19th century. It started in England. Well, James, one of the surprising things I learned from this book was that a very early form of football was almost certainly already being played in Japan in the seventh century. So it's the Japanese who taught the world to play soccer. Well, no. It seems that the Japanese game never left Japan. It's the English form of soccer that came to be played and watched all over the world. All over the world, except in the United States. Well, James, that's another surprising thing I learned from the book. It's true that the U.S. media don't pay much attention to soccer, and we don't think of it as an American sport. But it turns out there's quite a passionate interest in soccer among at least one group of people living in the United States. School children? No, immigrants who were born outside the U.S. borders. Did you know that there are currently about 56 million people living in the United States who were born in other countries and moved to the United States later in life? 12 million U.S. residents, for example, were born in Mexico, a country with a strong soccer tradition. Hmm, interesting. So there's probably a surprising amount of support for the Mexican national team in the United States. That's right. And it's not just at the international level that we see this interest in teams playing elsewhere. Local teams too have worldwide fan clubs, television, and the internet, and of course, worldwide advertising have made local soccer a global phenomenon. Can you give me an example? Well, okay. The example that Alison Farthing gives is the Italian team AC Verona. She explains that in the 2002 season, Verona usually had four or five players on the field who were not Italian. They had a French Algerian player, an African goalkeeper, and two brilliant goal scorers from South America. These players attracted a lot of interest in their home countries and regions. So even though Verona were an Italian team. Playing in the Italian national championships, they had people watching their games in Algeria, Argentina, Brazil, Ghana. Ah, and then in 2003. Exactly, in 2003, AC Verona bought the German team captain Franz Schmidt, a great player, and even more to the point, James, a German player. Up until then, all of Verona's international players had been from the south. The team really hadn't been able to attract much attention from soccer fans in the north, but with the arrival of the great Franz Schmidt, all that changed. Suddenly, a huge new market opened up for the club, not only in Germany but all over northern Europe. Amazing! And I thought they bought him because he scored goals. Well, as I found out, James, nothing is quite that simple in the world of soccer.